Welcome to the new release of NIME Analytics Platform 3.6 and NIME Server 4.7. We have developed some great new features, which we hope you like and find useful. The aim of today's video is to present the most relevant features, and I will give you a link to a web page where you can find a list of all new features. We will start with some features added in the open uh, source NIME Analytics platform, which include the improvement of the usability and some new nodes related to Git client, deep learning, JavaScript views, big data extensions, and more. After, we'll have a look at the new server managed customizations feature of the NIME server 4.7. I'll also show uh, you some preview features that are not production ready, but have been included in this release. Let's start with what has been added to the NIME Analytics platform. Specifically, let's have a look at some improvement to the usability. The first step is always to launch the workspace, and you see that now we have the button that says Launch. If you have a bunch of nodes on the editor and you'd like to connect all of them, now you can do that with the context menu. Select the nodes you want to connect and select Connect from the context menu or press Ctrl plus L. Vice versa, if you have a bunch of disconnected nodes and you want to connect them, just select all of them, right-click and select Disconnect Nodes. On the same topic, we added a new functionality that allows you to replace a node with another node. Simply drag a node from the editor and drop it to another node. Now you can also zoom in and zoom out from the editor with Ctrl plus the mouse wheel. And to log in to a server from a NIME Explorer, you can just double click it and the server login page will pop up automatically. To wrap up on the new usability features, you can connect and disconnect selected nodes, replace nodes with other nodes, zoom in and zoom out uh, with Ctrl plus mouse wheel and access a NIME server via simple double click. Let's talk now about the new integrations and utility nodes. Git is a version control system for tracking changes in computer files and coordinating work among multiple people. It is primarily used for source code management in software development, but it can be used to keep track of changes in any set of files. We have added a bunch of utility nodes to extract statistics from Git repositories. Specifically, the new Git nodes allow you to work with local Git repositories. These nodes can be used to find commits using different criteria, like authors, branches, etc. Find branches containing specific commits, tag commits, and retrieve details about commits like author, date, affected files, etc. The workflow you see here finds first Git commits, and the related details, then with the math formula node computes a number of affected lines, and with a group by compute and aggregate statistics. Then we visualize the results with the statistics node and the Instagram interactive node. With a more complex workflow like the one you see here, we can extract advanced statistics from Git repositories. We start by finding all branches for selection, then we select the branch and time range, we find the Git commits, and git details, and based on the selected statistics, we can visualize statistics or views on authors, commit dates, files, and commit messages. Apache Kafka is an open source published subscribed messaging system focusing on high performance, vertical scalability, and fault tolerance. This first version of NIME's Apache Kafka integration ships with three new nodes. Kafka Connector connects to a Kafka cluster, Kafka Consumer consumes messages from Kafka and Kafka Producer, which sends messages to Kafka. Regarding the new data manipulation nodes, I want to introduce you the Numeric Outliers node. The Numeric Outliers node is a convenient way to remove suspicious or incorrect numerical data from your dataset. Various outlier treatment and detection options such as detecting outliers only within their respective groups, gives this node high level of flexibility. You can apply the same outlier model to another branch of the workflow with the numeric outliers apply node. The new column expressions node allows you to add new columns to a table or replace existing columns using expressions that are executed row-wise on the input table. 
a library of predefined functions for things like string manipulation and mathematical formulas make it easy to construct expressions. These expressions can be as simple as single function code, but they can also be as complex as you like. You can also implement expressions based on the JavaScript syntax. Then we have the constant column filter node. This node removes columns from the input data table if they have only one single constant value or only missing values or less rows than a specified minimum number. The new call workflow table base node makes it easier to call other workflows using an entire name table. A caller workflow can send a table and flow variables to another workflow and receive a table from the callee via the new container input output nodes. So the container input table receives a table from a caller workflow, the container input variable receives flow variables from a caller workflow and the container output table sends a table to a caller workflow. The NIME server connection node allows the user to connect to a NIME server. After a connection has been established, all of the remote file handling nodes can be used with a connected server. The server connection can also be used together with a core workflow table base node in order to run workflows that are shared by a NIME server. The new scorer JavaScript node is an enhanced version of the NIME scorer node. In addition to providing access to more detailed statistics about prediction accuracy, the new node can interact with other JavaScript views in a rep meter node view or NIME web portal page. This node displays in its view the confusion metrics, the accuracy statistics by class and your overall statistics. Now I want to give you an overview about what's new about deep learning. We can now set up deep network architectures without writing a single line of code. Keras is an high-level neural networks API written in Python and capable of running on top of TensorFlow, for example. Here we see the configuration window of the Keras Convolution 2D layer that allows us defining input tensor, kernel size, strides, and so on. On the same concept, the Keras LSTM layer configuration node allows us defining input tensor, first hidden state tensor, second hidden state tensor, and so on and so forth. Here you can see another configuration window, this time for the DL Keras Network Learner node. What is really nice about the DL Keras Network Learner node is that you can monitor the learning rate either with the loss function or with the accuracy. Another valuable integration related to deep learning is the one with TensorFlow. TensorFlow is an open source software library for high performance numerical computation. Its flexible architecture allows easy deployment of computation across a variety of platforms, CPUs, GPUs, and TPUs. Now you are able to use regular TensorFlow models within NIME Analytics platform and seamlessly convert from Keras to TensorFlow for efficient network execution. Here you can see the configuration window of the DL Network Executor node, which allows to execute a deep learning network on a compatible external backend, which can be selected by the user. To wrap up on this, we have developed some new nodes that allow us to create easily new networks, edit and exporting them. We also made some performance improvement and we allow now to integrate custom layers and loss functions. Let's move now on the new database integration, which has been released as preview under the Nine Labs category. The new database framework is not yet feature complete, but it already contains many new cool features that we want to share with you and get your feedback on. The new framework already contains all nodes necessary to visually interact with your favorite database. It includes some usability improvement, such as flexible type mapping framework, database schema handling, and advanced SQL editor with syntax highlighting and code completion. You can also rely on dedicated transactions, flexible driver management, and on improved connection management. Also, the performances have been improved with connection pooling for parallel execution and streaming support of all reader and writer nodes. This is an opportunity for you to test drive the new nodes and to give us feedback. So let's see what's about the big data extensions. We wanted to better support big data file formats 
to improve efficiency and speed. That is why you can now read and write Parquet and ORC files with NIME. The new Parquet and ORC reader and writer nodes can use your local disk HDFS or S3. To add on this, we have also updated a couple of nodes, that is Spark to Hive and Spark to Impala nodes. With the release, we add support for Apache Spark 2.3. The only thing you need to do in order to reuse your existing big data workflows on Spark 2.3 cluster is to change the Spark version in the Create Spark Context node to 2.3 and re-execute your workflow. We added new nodes such as Spark Pivot and Spark Missing Value Apply node and we have now the Frequent Item Sets and Association Rule nodes as the latest addition to the Apache Spark MLib node collection for the NIME extension for Apache Spark. Apache Livy is a service that enables easy interaction with a Spark cluster of a REST interface. The new Create Spark context via Livy node provides out of the box compatibility with Hadoop distributions that include EV, such as Ortonworks HTTP version 2.6.3 and higher, Amazon EMR, version 5.9.0 and higher or Microsoft HD Insight without the need to install any further software on the cluster. The node provides a dialog that makes it easy to control the cluster resources of your Spark context. The new Create Local Big Data Environment node creates a fully functional local big data environment including Apache Spark, Apache Hive and HDFS. It provides everything to easily get started with big data, rapidly prototype workflows, and leverage Spark on multi-core machines. With this new node, you don't need to install additional software, you don't need a cluster, and you don't need a job server. With the configuration window, you can set up the number of threads, add custom Spark settings, deactivate Hive support, which makes things faster, and use a customer Hive data folder. We now provide an integration with Sparkling Water that allows us to combine the fast, scalable machine learning algorithms of H2O with the capabilities of Spark. This allows us to scale up model training and prediction using NIME H2O Sparkling Water integration and seamlessly change workflows integrating NIME H2O machine learning to be executed on your Apache Spark cluster. This workflow uses a local big data environment and within that, we can use the Spark to H2O to use H2O on Spark, that is Sparkling Water. We have seen some of the new cool features added to the new release of NIME Analytics Platform. Let's move now to what's new with NIME Server 4.7. We will start first with the Management Client Preferences feature. Management Client Preferences makes IT operations easier by centrally managing NIME Analytics Platform preferences. This allows you to define preference profiles for different use cases. Preference profiles can consist of preference files, scripts, and database drivers, which can then be deployed to an NIME Analytics platform on request or automatically. Your end users no longer need to make changes to their preferences to work with company resources. Let's suppose we have different departments and each one of those has different requirements. Also, each one of those have different operating systems, such as Windows 7, Windows 10, Linux, and Macintosh. With the new Management Client Preferences feature, we can set up different client profiles based on the requirements of each department. The profiles can include preferences, drivers, and more. Those client profiles are defined by creating a number of different preferences files. So, in this case, we have a default preference file, a Python Linux preference file, a Python Mac preference file, and so on and so forth. There are three ways to apply preferences via nime.ini, one setting in preferences from the client, and programmatically via extension point. This feature is part of nime server medium and large, and it's available to both users and consumers. Where a mount point is not defined on the server side, the mount point for the server will be added by default. With the new release of the NIME Server 4.7, there are a bunch of features released as preview. Those are distributed executors, job view, and workflow hub. 
one important aspect of our work to make the NIME server more scalable is the NIME distributed executors. With this release, the distributed executors are almost feature complete. It's now possible to run any NIME workflow that doesn't contain either file, app, and download quick forms on the NIME server using distributed executors and scale the concurrent execution of workflows well beyond what was previously possible. So the idea is not only to support the scaling up by adding more cores to the machine where the NIME server is installed, but we can also scale out by using more than one executor to execute workflows with the NIME server. So the main concept is to run multiple executors on independent hardware. The distributed executors rely heavily on the NIME REST interface and on a message queuing system called RabbitMQ. Another cool functionality that is available as preview is the job view. The job view allows users to look behind the scenes of a workflow running on NIME server, which we call a job. It is already possible to do a lot of useful things, such as inspect the workflow state, including things like each node's message, warning and errors, state and progress, reconfigure nodes and wrapped metanodes, visualize data and views, reset, execute and cancel nodes. This is a big advantage, since up until now we were able to visualize the workflows stored on the server open in a temporary copy. Now we can check what my workflow is doing. Also, we can change the configuration settings in the job or visualize the output of any JavaScript view nodes. Nine workflow app is the place for Nine community to share workflows. Here you can browse all of our example workflows. This will also be the place for community members to share their own workflows. Show your appreciation for community members by adding ratings or comment on why the workflow is so great. You will be able to log in to the community workflow hub with your Nine forum account. So you can use it to share, discover, search, rate, comment, and version workflows. The Nine Workflow Hub is now available for you as a private version of Community Workflow Hub. This is called Nine Server Workflow Hub and it allows you to organize and document workflows and help foster best practice. To conclude, I would like to point you to an important update made on the Nine Server. We retired the SOAP API technology since all existing functionality and more are now implemented in the Nine Server REST API. This has been disabled by default in July release, so you can switch on again, but it will be completely removed in December 2018 release. For more details, you can check the NIME server release notes and update guide. As additional resource, you can check the webpage What's New in NIME Analytics Platform 3.6 and NIME Server 4.7 at the following link.